Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is a continuation of classes on the topic coordination chemistry. And in this video, we shall learn about the advanced theory which is proposed in order to explain the formation of a coordinate bond between the central metal atom or ion and the surrounding ligands. In our previous videos, we said about the Werner's theory which was proposed for the first time in order to explain the formation of a bond between a central metal ion and ligand. But though Werner's theory gave a sophisticated information, a basic for the explanation of the formation of a coordinate bond between the metal atom and the central metal ion, still Werner's theory has some limitations. That is, Werner's theory was failed to explain the exact way of formation of coordinate bond between the central metal ion and the ligands. As well, uh, in Werner's theory, we said that if, a co if the coordination compound is having a coordination number equals to 4, either the coordination compound may have a tetrahedral geometry or it may have a square planar geometry. But no clear-cut explanation was given by Werner's theory that whether a four-coordinate system can attain or adopt the tetrahedral geometry or square planar geometry. And in Werner's theory, there is no explanation was given about the spectral properties and magnetic behavior of a coordination compound. In order to overcome all these limitations of Werner's theory, a very famous scientist that is Pauling. Pauling proposed the valence bond theory in by considering the concept of hybridization between the orbitals of the central metal ion and the concept of overlapping of orbitals. Overlapping of orbitals. By considering these two concepts that can happen between central metal ion, I mean to say the orbitals of the central metal ion and the orbitals of the approaching ligands, Pauling gave an effective explanation for the formation of a coordinate bond between the central metal atom and the ligand. And now we shall see the important postulate set by Pauling under his valence bond theory. If you come to the postulates of valence bond theory proposed for the formation of coordinate bond between the central metal atom or ion and the approaching ligands stated by Pauling. So according to the first postulate, when ligands are approaching the central metal ion, depending upon the number of ligands approaching the central metal ion, the central metal ion made available a sufficient number of empty orbital in it, in its valence shell, so as to form a coordinate bond with the approaching suitable ligand. That's what we said. The central metal ion or ion in the complex makes the available or an adequate number of empty orbitals for the formation of coordinate bond with suitable ligands. So one question may arise in the mind, so how many empty orbitals will the central metal ion will create? The number of central metal ions that the central metal ion can create will be exactly equals to the coordination number of the central metal ion. That is, if the coordination number of the central metal ion is 6, then the approaching ligands will be equals to 6. I mean to say the central metal ion will create 6 empty orbitals in it. Suppose if the coordination number of the central metal ion is equals to 4, then the central metal ion will create 4 empty orbitals in it. So whatever the number of ligands that approaches towards the central metal ion, since only the sufficient that either 4, 6 or 2 or whatever it may be depending upon its coordination number, only those many orbitals, so those many ligands will uh, form a coordinate bond with the central metal ion. Okay. Once the vacant orbitals are created in the central metal ion, the empty orbitals so far created in the central metal ion will get intermixed with each other. That means they will undergo 
hybridization so that once the orbitals undergo hybridization they will produce the same number of orbitals which are having equivalent energy means when orbitals of different energy were mixed with each other intermixed that will give a set of new orbitals having the equivalent energy same energy and those orbitals will be called as hybrid orbitals and these hybrid orbitals depending upon the type of hybridization the orbitals will be directed towards a particular uh, angles that so as to give a particular geometry and in that particular direction the approached ligands will be directed uh, towards that uh, hybrid orbital so as to make coordinate bond with the central metal ion so for example if the coordination number of the central metal ion is equals to 6 then there are two possibilities if the central metal ion frames sp3 d2 hybridization or it may show d2 sp3 hybridization if the central metal ion with the coordination number 6 if it undergoes either of the hybridization then that will give octahedral geometry and if the coordination number of the central metal ion is equals to 4 then there are two possibilities that is the central metal ion can undergo sp3 hybridization or it can undergo dsp2 hybridization so you can notice 3 plus 1 4 2 plus 1 plus 1 4 so four uh, hybrid orbitals are there if the central metal ion is involved in sp3 hybridization then the resulting four coordinate complex will be having tetrahedral geometry instead of sp3 hybridization if the central metal ion undergoes DSP2 hybridization, then such uh, complexes will give square planar complexes. This is the actual limitation of the Werner's theory. That is, Werner's theory said a four coordination complex can have either tetrahedral or square planar geometry, but no distinction at all between tetrahedral and square planar complexes with coordination number equals to 4 by Werner's theory. But here in case of valence bond theory, Pauling successfully explained that if a coordination compound is having coordination number equals to 4, if the central metal ion is in sp3 hybridization, then that will be having a tetrahedral geometry. And if the central metal ion is in, involved in uh, dsp2 or you can go with sp2d. Uh, hybridization then that gives square plane or geometry so one problem has been solved by the valence bond theory the next postulate of valence bond theory is so we said when ligands approaches towards the central metal ion then there creates some vacant d orbitals or vacant orbitals in the valence shell of the central metal ion so depending upon the nature of the ligand which is approaching towards the central metal ion the electronic distribution in the d orbitals of the central metal ion will get vary that is suppose if the approaching ligand is a strong ligand then the electronic distribution in the d orbitals of the central metal ion will take place against to the hund's rule that means so instead of accommodating the electrons uniformly in each orbital thereafter pairing the electron that is according to Hund's rule but when the approaching ligand is a strong ligand instead of distributing the electrons according to Hund's rule the electronic pairing itself will take place in the beginning instead if the approaching ligand is a weak ligand then there will be no disturbance in the electronic distribution in the d orbitals the electronic distribution will take place according to Hund's rule so that is according to the fourth postulate of the valence bond theory so for example uh, if the approaching ligand is either nh3 or co or cn so and so uh, etc that is uh, nh3 carbonyl cyano so these are the strong ligands so when the either of the one approaches the central metal ion then that makes the distribution of or accommodation of electrons in the d orbitals of the central metal ion against to Hund's rule if the approaching ligand is a chloro 
fluoro iodo like this then in such case the electronic distribution these ligands are examples of weak ligands when these ligands are either of the one approaching the central metal ion then in the d orbitals of the central metal ion electronic distribution will take place according to hund's rule that is a clear explanation regarding the fourth postulate of the valence bond theory next the fifth postulate of valence bond theory is in case of hybridization uh, when the central metal ion is creating the vacant orbitals in its valence shell there are two possibilities with respect to the d orbital of the central metal ion that is the central metal ion may take the n minus 1 d orbital for the process of hybridization or it may take n d orbital for the process of hybridization if the central metal ion takes n minus 1 d orbital for the process of hybridization then the resulting complex with the n minus 1 d orbital which is involved in hybridization will be called as inner orbital complex and in case of a inner orbital complex the number of unpaired electron present will be very less or it may be zero also such a kind of complex hence called as low spin complex if the central metal ion is take uh, nd orbital for the process of hybridization then the complex which is obtained will be called as outer orbital complex and in case of an outer orbital complex the number of unpaid electrons in the d orbital will be more hence such a complex is called as high spin complex so for example if you come to the case of the octahedral complexes an octahedral complex may involve i mean to say the central metal ion with coordination number 6 may involve in a hybridization of d2 sp3 or sp3 d2 and here the d orbital is n minus 1 d and here the d orbital is n d so this is the inner orbital complex this is outer orbital complex and in such a comp in this hybridization the number of unpaired electron in the d orbital will be very less or it may be zero hence there will be very less number of unpaired electrons and in case of sp3 d2 hybridization there will be more number of uh, unpaired electron i mean to say it is called outer orbital complex and there will be more number of unpaired electrons will be there hence we call that as high spin complexes so in uh, this way we can easily say about whether a given complex is paramagnetic or diamagnetic that means by knowing whether a particular complex compound is having a sufficient number of unpaid electrons or whether the complex is having unpaid electron or not we can easily say whether the material is magnetic or not so that uh, we can say in other postulate if the complex uh, formed between a central metal ion and uh, the ligand materials if that complex is consisting of at least one unpaired electron then the complex will be magnetic that is it is paramagnetic in nature and if there is no unpaired electron in the complex compound formed then such a complex is called diamagnetic substance so one limitation of the werner's theory is once again solved that is werner's theory didn't give any explanation about the magnetic behavior of the complex compounds and valence bond theory can successfully explain about the magnetic property that is whether a complex compound is paramagnetic or diamagnetic so in actual sense when uh, the hybrid orbital of the metal ion overlaps with the fully filled orbitals of the ligand that will form a ligand metal coordinate bond and number of such bonds will vary with the number of empty orbitals uh, made available by the central metal ion that is that is purely based on the coordination number so in this way Pauling successfully explained the formation of a coordinate bond between the central metal ion and the ligand material so as to explain the geometry the coordination number uh, as well as the magnetic property of the complex compound 
and now we shall consider some of the examples so as to discuss the application of the postulate set by Pauling in his valence well bond theory so as to obtain the exact geometry based on the hybridization and whether the complex is paramagnetic or diamagnetic just by looking over to it that means by analyzing whether the complex is a high spin or low spin complex. Now we shall apply the rules of valence bond theory in order to explain the geometry structure as well the magnetic property of particular complex compounds. So firstly we shall consider the four coordinate systems. So let me go with Ni Cn four times with two minus charge. So this is the complex for our consideration. First we shall write the IUPAC name for this particular ion. It's a complex A ion. So first we need to say the number of ligands. So there are four cyano ligands. So it is tetra cyano. So only cyanide ligands are there. And since it is the complex A ion, the name of the central metal ion should end up with the let, uh, suffix 8. So tetra cyano nickelate. And here the nickel is in uh, 2 plus oxidation state. So the oxidation number will be written in the parenthesis in Roman number. And since it is the ion, we should mention that one. So the complete IUPAC name of this compound is tetracyanonicolate 2 ion. That's about the complete IUPAC name of this compound. And as we said, here the nickel is present in uh, 2 plus oxidation state. Okay, so now we shall apply all the concepts of uh, valence bond theory in order to explain the structure as well as the magnetic property of the complex. So here nickel is in, nickel is in uh, so here nickel is in uh, 2 plus oxidation state. So nickel is having the atomic number of 28. So since nickel is in uh, 2 plus oxidation state. So we shall write the ground state electronic configuration for the nickel 2 plus. So that is uh, it will be having an argon gas co and the electronic configuration of uh, nickel is uh, 3d8 4s2 will be there uh, when the nickel is in uh, zero oxidation state but here the nickel is in 2 plus oxidation state so there will be no electron in the 4s orbital so let me write that as 4s0 and since there will be 4s again we will be having 4p as well as okay 4p orbitals also available but there will be no electron so and that's about the electronic configuration of the nickel in ground state so the ground state electronic configuration of ni2 plus is argon gas core 3d8 4s0 4p0 so let me write the box electronic configuration for this so d will be having five boxes one two three four and five so eight electrons are there or before to that let me write the box configuration for this also so s and P so there will be three boxes so in D we are having eight electron so first one two three four five six seven eight so we are having totally uh, eight electrons in a 3d subshell and there is no electron in 4s and 4p and here the postulate of valence bond theory says that when the approaching ligand is a strong ligand then in the d orbital of the central metal ion the electronic distribution in d orbital will takes place again as to Hund's rule and here the ligand approaching is a cyano ligand according to valence bond theory cyano is a strong ligand therefore in presence of cyano ligand in the d orbital that is in 3d subshell of ni2 plus the electronic distribution will occur again as to Hund's rule that means here in these two orbitals we are having one electron H in the absence of cyanoligand but when these cyanoligands approaches 
the central metal ion that is Ni2 plus is supposed to create the adequate that is sufficient number of vacant orbitals in it. For that purpose, if it is possible, the D orbital should become vacant depending on whether the approaching ligand is strong or weak. And since the sino is a strong ligand, so electronic distribution occurs against to Hunsul. So, in presence of ligands, that too in presence of strong cyano ligand that is cn minus the electronic distribution will take place against to hund soul so that the electronic distribution will become like this organ gas core so in case of 3d 1 2 3 4 in case of 3d 2 4 6 8 8 electrons have been already occupied in case of 3d and there is one 4s and there are three 4p orbitals 4s and 4p so here one two three four five orbitals are available but we require i mean the ni2 plus ion is required only four vacant orbitals depending upon the coordination number so four so one 3d orbital is available so still three more are required so Ni2 plus involves 1 3d 1 4s and 2 4p orbitals for the process of hybridization so now the Ni2 plus is undergoing 1 d 1 s and 2 p orbitals so in this case of NiCn4 times 2 minus complex, the Ni2 plus, that is central metal ion, is undergoing DSP2 hybridization. Okay, and since the Ni2 plus ion is involved in the DSP2 hybridization, that creates the new set of orbitals having same energy by leaving. This unhybridized 3D orbitals filled with electrons as it is. So, this is the unhybridized 3D orbital. So, now we will be getting four hybrid orbitals, that is DSP2 orbitals. So, since there are four vacant orbitals were framed in the central metal ion, that is in case of Ni2. So, there are four sino ligands and sino is a monodentate ligand. So each sino ligand can donate two electrons to the central metal ion that is Ni2 plus. That mean the orbital of the cyano containing the lone pair of electrons will get overlap on the empty or vacant DSP2 hybrid orbital of the Ni2 plus so as to form a coordinate bond between Ni2 plus and cyano so these orbitals will get fill up with the electrons donated by the ligands so these two from one ligand this two from another cyano third and fourth so totally four pairs of electrons have been donated by four cyano ligands so as to form four Ni2 plus and cyano coordinate bonds. And since the central metal ion Ni2 plus is involved in DSP2 hybridization, since the central metal ion Ni2 plus is involved in DSP2 hybridization, the resulting complex will be having square planar geometry and since you can observe there is no unpaired electron at all in the complex so the complex is diamagnetic in nature due to absence of unpaired electrons so the two concepts we have been discussed that is due to absence of unpaired electron it is diamagnetic and due to dsp2 hybridization the tetracyno nicolate 2 ion is square plane or in geometry so that uh, in this way we can easily explain the geometry as well as the magnetic property of the coordination compound and we can write the structure of this complex also 
So the structure of the complex will appear like this. So Ni2 plus will be at the center. So Ni2 plus will be at the center. Now the four sino ligands will form a square planar geometry with the Ni2 plus cyano. This way with two minus charge on the complex. So this is the structure of the tetra cyano nickelate. To ion. So this is one example for the application of valence bond theory on the formation of coordination compound. The second example for the valence bond theory is NiCl4 2 minus. So shall give the IUPAC name for this compound. So the ligand is uh, chloro. There are four chloro ligands and is a complex anion and the central metal ion is nickel itself. So the IUPAC name is tetra chloro and since it is the anionic complex so nickelate and the oxidation state of nickel is 2 and since it is in the ionic form we should mention it as ion so this is the complete name of the complete IUPAC name of this compound and here once again nickel is in uh, 2 plus oxidation state and the ligand present is chloro that is the halogens are the weak ligands so that in presence of weak ligands in the d orbitals of the central metal ion electronic distribution will take place according to Hunsur. So now we shall see how the hybridization will occur in this complex and what is the magnetic behavior of this complex. So once again the same Ni2 plus in its ground state will be having the electronic configuration of AR 3D 8 4S 0 and again 4p0 so she'll write the box electronic configuration for this one so one two three let me take one more so for s there will be one box and for p there will be three boxes so eight so one two three four five six seven eight so eight electrons have been distributed in a 3d subshell and there are no electrons in 4s and 4p and since this is in case of ground state when no ligand is approached to the ni2 plus ion when four cl ligands approach to the central metal ion that is a nickel since the chloro is a weak ligand so in presence of in presence of the weak ligand that is the weak Cl minus ligand electronic distribution in the d orbitals of the central metal ion will take place according to Hunsul. Then there is no possibility of disturb, I mean, creation of a vacant orbital in 3D subshell. And now there are four chloro ligands approaching the central metal ion nickel. Nickel is supposed to create four vacant orbitals, but there is no possibility of creation of vacant orbitals in d subshell of the nickel so that it has to go for the next higher orbitals that is s and p orbitals present in fourth shell so since there are four vacant orbitals are supposed to be created so in presence of the weak cl minus ligand ni2 plus will take the consideration of the 4s and 4p orbital so how many vacant orbitals are supposed to be created four so there is one 4s and three 4p orbitals will be included for the process of hybridization so that means one s and three p that is ni2 plus will undergo sp3 hybridization Fine. So, after hybridization, there gives 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 vacant or empty sp3 hybrid orbitals by keeping the 3d orbitals unhybridized. This is 3d. So, now 
the approaching four Cl minus ligands will give two electrons each. That means the orbital containing lone pair electrons in the Cl will get overlap on the vacant sp3 hybrid orbital of the Ni2 plus so that here two electrons will get filled to form one coordinate bond second third and fourth so there occurs four due to this overlapping there occurs four ni2 plus and cl minus coordinate bonds and because of sp3 hybridization the resulting complex will be having tetrahedral geometry and you can notice in 3d orbital we are having two unpaid electrons so due to presence of unpaid electron this complex is paramagnetic in nature okay and that's about the application of valence bond theory on this particular complex and because of the sp3 hybridization the complex will be having tetrahedral geometry that is ni2 plus cn sorry cl 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 and cl so there will be tetrahedral geometry for the complex tetra cyanonicalate So, tetrahedral geometry for tetracyanonicalate. That's about the second complex. The third example is COnH3 6 times 3 plus. So, here NH3 is the ligand and cobalt is the central metal ion. So, we shall give the name for it. The amine ligands are in 6 number. So, it is hexa amine anyway it is a complex cation so the name of the central metal ion cobalt since cobalt is in 3 plus oxidation state and there is no ionic sphere present so we should mention it as ion so it is the complete IUPAC name and anyway here the ligand present is NH3 so according to valence bond theory NH3 is a strong ligand. So, in presence of strong ligand, the electronic distribution in the d orbitals of the central metal ion will take place according to Hund's rule. So, cobalt is in 3 plus oxidation state. So, cobalt 3 plus. Cobalt is having the atomic number of 27. So, in ground state, it is having the electronic configuration of 3D7, 4S. 2 in case of neutral cobalt atom but here in case of uh, cobalt 3 plus so we will be having 3d6 4s0 that is in case of cobalt 3 plus the two electrons from 4s and one electron from 3d will be removed so that in case of cobalt 3 plus it will be having the electronic configuration of 3d6 and 4 is 0. So, let us have the other uh, orbitals also. There will be 4p0. So, this is in case of ground state. Okay. So, we shall write the electronic configuration for it in the form of box diagram. 1, 2, 3, 4. And for S1, for P, it is 3. So, 3d6. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, all the electrons have been felt this is in absence of the nh3 ligand but once the nh3 ligands were approached since nh3 is a strong ligand so in the d orbitals of the cobalt 3 plus ion electronic distribution should take place against to hund's rule so therefore in presence of in presence of strong nh3 ligand in presence of strong NH3 ligand, the electronic distribution in cobalt 3 plus ion will occur. That is, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So, electronic distribution will take place against to Hund's rule. That means, 6 electrons are there totally, 2, 4, 6. So, they are created 2 vacant orbitals over here. So, 
4s and 4p. So this is 3d, this is 4s and this is 4p. And since the coordination number of the complex is 6, that means cobalt 3 plus ion supposed to create 6 vacant orbitals in its valence shell. So there are 2 in a 3d, 1 in 4s and 3 more are required that is these 3 4p orbitals. So as a total 2 plus 1 plus 3 that is d 2 s p 3. So cobalt 3 plus ion in this complex is involved in d 2 s p 3 hybridization. Okay and thereafter so once the hybridization is completed the unhybridized orbitals will remain undisturbed and there will be formation of set of new orbitals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are 6 equally energetic D2 sp3 hybrid orbitals were formed by leaving the filled 3D orbitals unhybridized. So there are six NH3 ligands are approaching the central CO3 plus ion and each NH3 ligand is having capability to donate one pair of electrons to cobalt 3 plus by overlapping of the orbital of the NH3 ligand containing lone pair of electrons will get overlap on the empty D2 sp3 hybrid orbital of the CO3 plus so as to frame the coordinate bond by giving six pairs of electrons to the cobalt 3 plus ion. So because of this there develops six CO3 plus and NH3 coordinate bonds. And since the hybridization of the CO3 plus ion that is central metal ion in this complex is D2 sp3 hybridization the n minus 1 d see here the valence shell is 4 but the inner d orbital is taken part in the process of hybridization so this is inner orbital complex inner orbital complex and since d2 sp3 hybridization is there so for the coordination number 6 the complex is having a geometry of octahedral and you can make a notice there is no unpaired electron at all in the unhybridized 3d orbital and the hybridized d2 sp3 orbitals due to absence of unpaired electron the complex is diamagnetic in nature and this about the formation of complex its nature geometry and magnetic property this is the application of valence bond theory for this complex. The next example for uh, explaining the valence bond theory is COF6 3 minus. So let us give the IUPAC name for this compound and here the ligand present is a fluorine and the central metal ion is cobalt and since it is a complex an ion we are supposed to finish the name of the central metal ion with the suffix 8. So the name will be Hexa fluoro cobaltate and since the cobalt is in 3 plus oxidation state and there is no ion XPO so that it will be ion and that is the complete IUPAC name for this compound and here the ligand present is F minus the halogen halide ligands are uh, weak ligands so in presence of weak ligands the electronic distribution in d orbitals of the central metal ion will take place according to Hund's rule and cobalt is in 3 plus oxidation state so again cobalt in 3 plus oxidation state with atomic number 27 will be having the electronic configuration of 3d6 4s0 4p0 and let me consider 4d also so 3d6 so let me write the box electronic configuration 1 2 3 4 for s it is 1 for p it is 3 and again for 4d 1 2 3 4 and 5 
So in 3D, we are having six electrons, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And here, the ligand present is a fluorine ligand, which is a weak ligand. So in presence of weak ligand, in the d orbitals, in the 3D orbitals of the cobalt, there will be distribution of electron density according to Hundsol. So there is no possibility of creation of vacant orbitals in 3D orbital. And since there are six ligands approaching cobalt, and there is no possibility of creation of the vacant orbitals in the 3D orbital, then the central cobalt ion supposed to utilize the 4D orbitals for the process of hybridization. Since six orbitals are required, so 1, 4s, 3, 4p, and 2, 4D orbitals will be considered for the process of hybridization. So, hold on slowly, s, p, 3, D2 hybridization will occur in case of cobalt 3 plus ion in the complex hexafluorocobaltate 3 ion. So, after hybridization, the 3D orbital with electrons remain as it is 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is 3D, and the 6 sp3 d2 hybrid orbitals 1 2 3 4 5 6 sp3 d2 hybrid orbitals will result where each orbital is having save energy and the three 4d orbitals will remain unaffected and they won't take part in hybridization and no involvement in the formation of coordinate bond and once the Vacant orbitals were formed, each ligand will be having capability, here the fluorine is a monodentate ligand, so it is having capability to donate one pair of electrons to the central metal ion, that is, the orbital containing lone pair of electrons in fluorine ligands will get overlap on the empty sp3d2 hybrid orbital of the cobalt 3 plus ion, so as to form a total of 6 CO3 plus fluorine coordinate bonds just by donating 6 pairs of electrons to the cobalt 3 plus ion. And since you can notice the 3D orbital is not available for the generation of vacant orbitals. In this case, CO3 plus utilized the 4D orbital, that is the outer ultimate D orbital, so that it is an outer orbital complex. Outer orbital complex. And since there is involvement of sp3 d2 hybridization by co3 plus ion so due to sp3 d2 hybridization once again the complex will be having octahedral geometry and you can notice the orbitals except the first orbital the four remaining 3d orbitals are having unpaired electrons so because of presence of unpaired electron this complex is paramagnetic in nature so thus, we have explained the nature, geometry and magnetic behavior of the complex based on the valence bond theory. So in this way, valence bond theory was very useful in explaining the geometry as well as the magnetic property of a coordination compound.